So you want to get your car remapped? <clears throat> Wait, don't do it just yet. So you're thinking of getting a remap and you're trying to do a bit of investigating. That's what I done before I got my remap and there weren't too many videos out there with what happens when you do get the remap. It was all about, oh, you're going to get extra horsepower and remapping makes your engine more powerful and you get this and that. And then you see videos of people accelerating before and then accelerating after they get their remap. And yeah, that's all good. But it's not a real in-depth sort of what to expect. I'd like to say thank you as well for the nice comments that everyone's left on the last videos. I try to be as honest as I can and just say how it is, uh, not sugarcoat it. And if I don't know something, then I don't know something. And I'm not gonna bullshit and try and pretend I do know about it. But the little that I do know, I'm gonna try and share it with you guys to save you maybe a bit of headache and a bit of money in the future and to try to pass on what I understand and, and my experience of the remap. So yeah, I had the two liter TDI, it was a 2009 Audi A5. It was originally 170 brake horsepower and I had a, a remap done and it took it up to about 200, 205 and it increased the torque as well. So yeah, happy days. Um, had it done at AMD, paid about 400 pounds. I know you're gonna say it's a lot, but they had the rolling road, it was AMD. So it's when you hit the forums and stuff, everyone would say like AMD or Revo or whatever. So I had my car remapped, drove out, felt that nice little boost, a little kickback that I wasn't used to. Okay, cool, that's, that's all right. Um, guys there tried to say, oh, you need to change your air fuel. Extra 30 pound, I said no. Nah. 400 quid's enough. Plus the research that I done on air filters, they don't really make that much of a difference. Uh, it wasn't really worth it for me. Um, so anyway, long story short, I've changed my mind. If you've watched my previous videos, I will say that it was pretty worth it. And it is to a certain extent. And the way, reason why I've changed my mind on remaps is because of this. <clears throat> it had 280 pounds foot of torque. After the remap, it jumped up to, I think 350 something. So let's say 360, yeah? My flywheel went and it started doing some juddering thing, yeah? So you pull away in first, you feel a little du -du 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 -du, little judder, yeah? That's my impression of a judder. So yeah, I sort of narrowed it down to where it was. It's the flywheel, it's the clutch or flywheel, it's one of those things. But more than likely, I thought, yeah, it's the flywheel. Spoke to some guys about it. Some guy, uh, mechanic, as soon as he got in the car, he said, yep, your flywheel's going. Apparently these cars all have a problem because they're dual mass flywheels. My car developed the judder. I thought it was because the car is quite old. It's got a few thousand miles on it. When I say a few thousand, it had about 60 or 70,000 miles on it. So I just put it down to the fact that the car's probably getting a bit older. <coughs> Excuse me, and there's wear and tear. So I had the flywheel changed and the clutch. Paid about 470 pounds from eBay. We've got a, a sax or sashes one or whatever you want to call it. Broke it in properly uh, for about six, 700 miles. No hard revs, uh, accelerations, no dumping the clutch. Not nice and smooth. Nice and easy. Had that replaced, ran the car, judder went away, everything was fine. After coming up to, I think, about another, say, between nine months and a year, I'd start, I'd felt that little judder coming back. Ever so slightly, it came back. It didn't just, it wasn't all of a sudden. It started coming back lightly, and it wasn't all the time. So I just, I thought, okay, it's cool, whatever. And then it started happening again, and the judder came back as normal. And I could make it happen and stuff. And only afterwards, after I had the clutch changed is when I found out about that max rating, the load. So the clutch was only rated to 300 pounds foot of torque. Previously, or stock, is 280. So there's a 20 pounds foot of torque that it can, it's got left over. After the remap, it went to 360. So that's 60 extra pounds foot of torque going over what it's rated for. And that was the big, that was the problem with the remap. And that is the problem that I think you find with remaps. You can hear stories about, yeah, the turbo gets pushed a bit more, your gearbox gets pushed a bit more. And that's about it, it's very vague. And I find that the problem is, if you've got a powerful car already, so if you've got like um, an R, a Golf R, or if you've got like a GTI, or say it's an S3, RS3, RS, RS cars from Audi, M car, or you've got an AMG one, those cars are already sort of built to take the power. They're built for that. So you can push them a bit more because they've got uprated parts. Now when you're, majority of the people that want to remap a car are gonna have 
looked like a basic average car. So like me, I had the average car. I would say now, looking back on it, I, I wish I didn't do it. It was good for the experience and to get the knowledge, but I wish I didn't, because I've sold that car now because of that. It, the judder started coming back. 700 and something pounds I ended up spending to get a new uh, clutch and flywheel fitted. And that's cheap because the main dealer, they wanted 1,000 something pounds. And that would have been twice that I would have had to do that. So after the second time when it started coming back and I clicked on, I thought, you know what, it's, it's time for a new car. I'd had that car already for a few years. You can see in the videos, I think I ended up having it for about five years altogether. Kind of lost, but yeah, back to the topic. If you're thinking of getting a remap and you just have an average car, so let's say you've got a 1.9 diesel or you've got a 1.6 something, then I would say leave it. Don't bother. Don't do it. Don't do it. And I know you don't want to hear that because I, if I had watched this and someone had said, don't do it, don't do that, I probably would have still not you don't know what he's talking about. I'm going to do it anyway. But the problem is, is that when you buy an average car, it's pretty average. They've got the top spec one with the uprated parts. It can take it. They're sportier cars. They can take the extra, extra 30, 40, 100 or whatever horsepower and torque and all that kind of stuff. But when you have an average car, unless you know exactly what you're dealing with, so say, for example, you're going to get a remap and you know that you'll say your flywheel rated to a certain amount, you know you're still going to be within those boundaries, then that's fine. Do it. If you really, really know what you're doing. If you're just going to go into it blindfolded, hand in your pocket, ready to give the guy money and getting excited about an extra 30 brake horsepower, which I will be honest, you might notice it because you drive that car every day. So when it just squirts just a little bit harder and it gives you a little bit more of a kick, you think, yeah, yeah, got a little bit, it's, it's more powerful, yeah. But to anyone in your car, they're not gonna go like, wow, your car's fast. They're not gonna do that, it's not gonna happen. So that's it, yeah, final thoughts, just sharing it with you guys, just so no one makes the mistakes that I did. Um, try and find out as much as you can. You're watching this, so you're obviously trying to find out about it. But I would say, if you just got an average car, don't bother getting a remap. You'll end up giving yourself more trouble, more pressure on your gearbox, more pressure on your clutch, more pl pressure on your flywheel, more pressure on your turbo. And then there's probably other things that it could be adding pressure to. They make the car stock for a reason and that's to give it longevity they have to they have to give you your car and know that it's gonna give as little problem as possible in say three years or however long the warranty is by uprating it you're giving if you're, you're you're trying to make a race car and race cars are very they have to be babied a lot it's got to have this has always got to be changed that's got to be monitored oh we need to put this in it change this up again and when you have a race car and those kind of people they're forever fiddling with their cars that's fine to a normal average joe say like me like you you're not going to be tinkering with the car yourself i'm quite a hands-on person and i know how to fix a lot of things myself but there's a certain line where you need to have a garage you need to lift your car you need to have the right tools and not all of us have these kind of things think Bad. twice Ugh. maybe save your money try and get something a bit better i sold that car because it started giving me those problems i got myself a nicer car I'll show you in the video i think it's a nicer car i done it up myself and i tried to black it out and stuff like that made it nicer and it's a bit guess what it's a bit more powerful so it's the same it's a 250d uh you get the 220s they come with 170 brake this one's a 250d so it's got 205 brake i know i can probably if i wanted to take it down to some other guy and he'll tune it up for me and he'll give me 230 break and this and that but guess what i'm not gonna do it because it's not worth it i don't think it's worth it at all extra 30 brake horsepower not gonna bother some cars can handle it some cars so you see that that like that guy on llf he's done his car to 700 brake horsepower he's still got stock gearbox stock i think he kept everything stock he just just remapped it to something crazy i did extra three three hundred or break or whatever and i don't know but the thing i think of when i see those kind of things like that when they're making crazy brake horsepower and really pushing the engine to the limits i think it's nice now <laughs> Give it a few more months and keep driving the car the way you're driving it and you'll soon find a problem because the car will give you the problem because something will give in eventually because not all of it's going to be rated to take it. But like I said, if the car's already a quick car, it should be able to handle it better. If it's a bog standard car, then I'd say leave it. It's not worth it. For an extra like 30 brake horsepower, let's say they give you 50 extra brake horsepower, I think it's pointless. I think it's pointless. Uh, but yeah, they're my. That's my final thoughts. It dragged on for a bit. Just trying to help out, uh, give my my opinion and my experience. So yeah, take it easy, guys. Peace.